One minute, sir. Just a minute. Sir, just check the YouTube, sir, once. Samna, sir? Yeah. Sir, tell me. Yeah. It is time now. Yeah. Sir, just check the YouTube once. Sir, shall I start the program, principal sir? Hello, sir. Sir, strength kya hai? Yeah, I think. 80, sir. Yeah, I think it's, we can. Some more people would be there on YouTube. Also. YouTube also. Go ahead then, nine, it's nine, no? Yes, sir, nine, four, nine, five. Another two minutes, so then you can. Oh, oh, pani de phata phata gilas lagu. Hmm? Hmm? No, no, sir, if everybody is ready, just let us start. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm audible? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, now it's clear. Okay. Well, once I want to try the sharing of my screen. Yes, sir. So I'm free to share or you will give permission? No, sir. You can share, sir. In your own. Yes. Okay. Is it? You are able to see my presentation? Yes, yes, sir. Very yes. much. Right. Okay. Yes, yes. So we can start, or we have to wait. No, sir. We will start, sir. We'll start, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, colleagues and dear students, good morning from University of West Indies, Trinidad and Tobago. Doctor Rajiv. Yeah, sir. One second. One second. Doctor Somnath will start. Okay. Uh, then uh, followed by your introduction and other things. Uh, we'll have to okay, talk. okay, okay. No so, Dr. Somnath. Yeah. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> it is my pleasure to welcome everyone to our beautiful first virtual FDP Pragrata 
2020 organized by Narsrapeta Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Narsrapet. We are so glad to have you all today morning and appreciate your presence at this difficult time. We would like to extend a special welcome to our guest and guest of honor and speaker of the day, Dr. Rajiv Tahia, Director, School of Pharmacy, Faculty of Medical Sciences, the University of West Indies, St. Augustine, and Trinidad and Tobago. Who will be the speaking later and highlight the credibility and expertise on the field in pharmacy? Now, I would like to request our beloved principal and today's session convener, Professor Dr. Jain Suresh Kumar, to give few words about today's session. So please Thank continue, you. sir. Thank you, Dr. Somnath. Uh, and on behalf of Nurse Robert Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences, as a principal, uh, I, I take the privilege of uh, welcoming all the participants in this uh, six day FDP, EFDP, you can say. And uh, I'm happy that uh, Dr. Rajiv Dahiya, in spite of his busy schedule at his university, so everybody is, uh, uh, you know, actually enjoying their COVID. Uh, uh, vacation like mm -hmm. at their own places, but uh, Sir Dr. Rajiv and they are all busy at their places at the universities only. And you know, the time uh, lag also is there uh, uh, for IST and uh, place of uh, West Indies. Uh, in spite of that, also, he has readily accepted. And I should thank him uh, personally and from our institutions. Thank you, Dr. Rajiv Dahiya. And uh, the Topic of today is also on peptides, uh, a very interesting topic. I think uh, it's going to be an interesting session. I request every, all the audience and uh, participants to be online and uh, take good advantage of this. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rajiv. Thank you very much. So Over. I can start. Thank you Dr. so much, sir, for your chariot talking towards the today's session. Now I'd like to request Dr. D. Shriya Vamsi, Assistant Professor, Narsrafeta Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences, and moderator for today's session to introduce our today's speaker. So Shriya, please continue. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I, Dr. B. Shriya Bellamkonda, Assistant Professor, Narsrafeta Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences. It's a pleasure for me to introduce our speaker, who is going to talk us about the cyclo oligopeptide with pharmacological interest. I feel elated to introduce him to everyone, Dr. Raju Dahya. He is a man of virtue and simplicity. Dr. Raju Dahya is Doctor of Science in Clinical Pharmacology, Doctor of Philosophy in Pharmacy. He is a President of the Association of Pharmacy Professionals, India. Dr. Raju Dahya is presently Director, School of Pharmacy, Faculty of Medical Sciences, the University of West Indies since February 2016. He has worked as a principal of Global College of Pharmacy and NRI Institute of Pharmacy, Sopal Madhya Pradesh. In past, he has 20 years of teaching and research experience. He is honored with Innovative Researcher Award in June 2012 by President of APTI Haryana State Branch, New Delhi. Young Scientist Award in March 2014 by Lovely Professional University, Punjab. Most Productive Researcher Award in March 2019 by the University of West Indies, Trinidad and Tobago. Appreciation Award in July 2019, AIMSC University, Malaysia, and many more national and international awards. He has supervised more than 20 MPharmC projects and four PhD projects. He is editor in chief of reputed pharmaceutical journal of international level, Bulletin of Pharmaceutical Research. He is also executive editor of news magazine, APP Scientific Update. He is a reviewer of many reputed journals from different nations. He has remained convener, organizing chairman, scientific committee chairman for scientific many scientific conferences and seminars. He has been invited 23 times as a guest speaker in various conferences, including 37 orations and 105 poster presentations. He is a fellow member of International Conference of Chemistry and Environment, Association of Pharmacy Professionals, Indian Pharmaceutical Association, 
Association of Pharmaceutical Teachers of India, Indian Pharmacy Graduates Association, Indian Hospital Pharmacists Association, Indian Society of Chemists and Biologists, Indian Council of Chemists, Science of, uh, Society of Pharmacovigilance India, and many more. Until now, he has published 67 papers, review articles in the various peer-reviewed uh, international and national journals with impact factors and three book chapters with Springer and Tyler and Francis. His research indexes are 20 H index in Google Scholar, 14 H index in Scopus, 13 H index in Kublon, 46 I10 index in Google Scholar, 1200 plus uh, Google Scholar citations, 640 plus Scopus citations, 470 plus Web of Science citations. In the next in the next 60 minutes, you will learn some inside secrets of this topic. I am sure we are enjoying getting to know. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. Rajiv Bhatia. Thank you, Dr. Surya. So, one, one second. Sorry to interrupt, uh, Dr. Rajiv. I, I would be failing in my duties if I don't mention uh, the help you made to us uh, to associate uh, APP, uh, Association of Pharmacy Professionals India, uh, with our program. Uh, mm -hmm. We are really indebted to you. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, and Surya also uh, did not mention the number of programs uh, what you have conducted on the dais of APP. I think it's more than uh, 100 and 150 throughout yes. uh, India. And uh, the pharmacy professionals across uh, the universe are getting uh, the advantage uh, of Association of Pharmacy Professionals. Actually, we have our APP, Andhra Pradesh State Branch President, uh, Dr. Suresh Chenupati. Uh, mm -hmm. Due to some technical issues, I think he is uh, network issue. He is not in this group. Uh, but in, I, in, uh, in, in Ethiopia, there are issues. Yeah, there with are internet. Issues. Okay, and I should be thankful to you and APP, sir. Please go okay. ahead. Thank you very much. So, uh, before starting, uh, I would, uh, colleagues and dear student, I would like to thank Dr. Jain Suresh Kumar, principal of the Hosting Institute, management his team members for their hard efforts they have put together for organizing this EFDP. I found it a, a good and interesting program in the interest of our professionals. So I could not say no. And how much Dr. J. N. Suresh Kumar and his colleagues are involved in association activities, it was really uh, impressive. In the past years, he took uh, increased interest in our activities. We know when we are organizing these type of things, always there are political things like IPA, APTA and those things. But I always want to be slip away from those things because we are professional. Uh, I found when I uh, put on this organization that I will assist IPA and other organization in betterment of our profession. It is not, uh, it should not class at any way. So my Overall effort is we should not clash together. We should identify the area where we are weak and there we should work for our profession, how much we can do. Remaining everybody is a busy person. I'm busy here, you are busy here. We are sparing the time for profession uh, and it is uh, uh, great. So uh, besides saying much more things, so I would concentrate on the task assigned to me for today FTP. I think it is the second session today. One session is already over and I hope that was interesting. Yes, sir. You are right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, although when I will go in depth, it will, people may feel a little bit boring because it is more, much more depth in research. But those who are really interested to research in peptides, that will be really beneficial for them. And it will also highlight my achievement all through the journey when I started and where I am today now. So the topic is cyclo oligopeptides with pharmacological interest. I am director here since 2016. Earlier I worked in Madhya Pradesh, two institutions I served as principal and then I moved here. Uh, I am group leader and principal investigator of one lab, laboratory of peptide research and development. Not a big lab, but I am trying to make it big. And I'm president of Association of Pharmacy Professional India, editor-in-chief of Bulletin of Pharmaceutical Research and executive editor of APP Scientific Update. Those are my side works, professional works, which I serve for my community. Uh, 
I, he, after coming here, because this country is pharmacy practice oriented here, no much weightage is given to pharmaceutics, medicinal chemistry, pharmacology, as is in India. So, so pharmacy practice is main here. They are running BSc pharmacy four-year course, and which we are trying to convert into a PharmD five-year course. Now, that is our stage. And we are trying to develop PhD, but it is very difficult here because uh, the job criteria are limited and uh, students are usually engaged after they did their degrees in the uh, hospital pharmacist and community pharmacist. But we are trying our best here uh, as per the circumstances. So I'll stick to the today topic. Uh, I have developed a lab here and we are currently engaged in the cyclic peptide projects. Also, we are uh, we, in the past, we synthesized the peptide derivatives of heterocycling and other aromatic compounds. So I will start from basic and then I will move in depth what actually we do, where do we collaborate, what we publish, and where you people can collaborate with us in our journey to strengthen your scientific profile. So I'll start from simplest peptide bond. So peptide bond, it is a covalent chemical bond which is formed between two molecules. So who are uh, what are those possible two molecules? Those are amino acids, which have a free amino terminal and free carboxyl terminal. So here in the lower picture, you can see th this NH2 and CO2 two gr terminal groups are free. Are you able to see the arrow? Hello? Are you yes. able to see uh, what the arrow I am moving on the screen? Are you able to yes. see? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so, so these are terminal amino and carboxyl group. And so the reaction happens between these amino and the carboxyl groups. So it is a condensation type of reaction where a water molecule releases and a bond is formed CONH, which is called as a peptide or amide bond. So here it is same reaction is shown by means of the models and here a water molecule is releasing. So if you, this is a dipeptide formation. If we continue this, how a tripeptide or a tetrapeptide forms, so we can check in this sequence. So here in the yellow picture, you are seeing a tripeptide formation. So same, two, three amino acid units are coming together uh, and then they are forming the CONH bond. Two, C, two peptide bonds are formed and a tripeptide will form. In the lower diagram, you can see similarly, four molecules come together with the release of three water molecules and a tetrapeptide, and it is so on. Because as I mentioned, these are cyclo-oligopeptides. So oligopeptides means there may be a dipeptide, tripeptide, or it may be up to 20. These are small molecules because I will say small molecules for the 20 chains because we are dealing with peptide proteins, uh, which are big molecules, where there are hundreds of amino acids. So, Here, this is the simplest amino acid everybody is aware of, glycine. That is the formula. So, but this is the ABCD. From here, the base starts. We are dealing with the modified amino acids like isocerine. Serine is normal amino acid, but isocerine, dehydrohomoalanine. Alanine is the normal amino acid. Then chloroisolution. Isolution is the normal amino acid. Here it is halogenated. So, and likewise, like this structure you are seeing, it is 3-hydroxy-3-methylproline. But proline is our normal amino acid, which either in L or with, with D stereochemistry we utilize for the synthesis. Another unique amino acids like formyl leucine. Formyl, here you can see in the uh, structure of this cyclic peptide, it is an antifungal cyclic depsy peptide where formyl leucine. So you can see it is the leucine part and NH2 group is formylated with CHO group. So it is formyl leucine. So it is unusual amino acid. Then chloroisoleucine. So here one chloro group is introduced. If it is H, then it will become isoleucine part. But here one chloro group is introduced. So it become unusual. So through literature, I want to be aware that we, if we are synthesizing peptide, it does not mean we are only dealing with glycine leucine. So uh, complex chemistry is there. And as, as you will go inside the project, so it will become more and more complex. And methylation. This I found a 
good reaction which generally modulates the biological structural and pharmacokinetic properties of the peptides and here you can see in the structure it is the structure of a cyclic peptide known as seglitide and you can see here normal peptide bond is conh but here you are seeing conch3 so we are replacing one hydrogen of the nh with ch3 so it is n methylation so this type of modification if the cyclic peptide molecule generally modulates the biological structural and pharmacokinetic properties of peptide we synthesized in our lab some n methylated cyclic peptide and we found those are more biologically active than their in comparison to their non n methylated congeners here are some other structure with the n methylated moiety percy peptide b with the n methyl well line structure galaxa amide which is a polymer it is a polymer of leucine there are four leucine units but out of four leucine unit two units are n methylated leucine units and two are non methylated leucine units so it is uh, in overall it is a leucine polymer galaxa amide so here Another unique amino acids are there like ADPA, AHPEA. Lower structure you are seeing. It is an example of a, not a cyclic peptide. It is a linear chain. But there, here both these acidic moieties, which are in turn are gamma amino acids, can be seen, which are amino hydroxy pentaenoic acid and amino dihydroxy pentaenoic. So such type of acidic moieties are also present, and these are nothing but the modified amino acids. So, the idea to represent these slides before you that you should not understand that we are just circulating around leucine, glycine, valine, phenylalanine. No, that is not that. From there we are starting. Their modified derivative we have to deal with according to the project selected. Heterocyclic amine. Generally, we have seen heterocyclic amine, uh, heterocyclic. structures like thiazol oxazol oxazoline in simple chemistry we have synthesized their derivatives and uh, we have incorporated those in other molecules so here is another example cyclic peptide structure we can also form with thiazol oxazol oxazoline so here is the cyclic peptide nostocyclopeptide where you can see two of the thiazol ring with the peptide bond and one is ox methyl oxazol ring similarly in the petal amide a and petal amide c by red color we have indicated the thiazol rings by green color one ring is the oxazoline and one is methyl oxazoline and here in the structure two methyl oxazoline ring are there in the petal amide c so besides these heterocyclic rings there are natural heterocyclic amino acids truly those are histidine and tryptophan histidine with the imidazole ring and tryptophan with the indole ring and there is another amino acid which is really not heterocyclic it is a amino acid you can call it a amino acid not amino acid so here are some of the structures i cited like facalistatin 13 10 segetalin a segetalin b in all you can see the presence of the tryptophan heterocyclic amino acid in all but in stylistin b you can see the presence of a histidine amino acid with the imidazole nucleus and remaining green arrow are indicating the presence of amino acids proline amino acid proline which is present in the cis and trans geometry other moieties like halogenated one isocerine isolate uh, uh, there is st stereo isomer those may be present so we we can interpret it by means of structures in calexamide a b which are two cyclic peptide we can see 1 2 3 4 5 five hydroxy tryptophan moiety so it is another modified amino acid our normal amino acid is tryptophan it is a it is six hydroxy tryptophan and here in calexamide b we can see two bromo six hydroxy tryptophan it is another modified halogenated amino acid so we are dealing with such compounds in calexamide f you can see the presence of isocerine here and heterocyclic congener thiazol along with the heterocyclic amino acid tryptophan okay 
when we are dealing with cyclic peptides we can't ignore the linear peptides because both have the biopotential but if in terms of specific example if you want to see you can see the structure of thyrotropic releasing hormone glutathione which is a antioxidant leopeptin it is a protease inhibitor these are linear chain structures there is no cyclization in the structure but yet are bioactive here is the structure of anti diuretic hormone which you are well aware vasopressin it is a mixture of cyclic and the linear chain this is the cyclic part and here is the linear tail another amino acid green gramicidin s it is a popular known peptide antibiotic it is totally cyclic in structure there is no linear chain it is the normal representation and it is the structural representation so by means of this you can differ between linear and uh, cyclic peptides structurally if we compare both molecules cyclic or linear peptides always in our peptide chemistry cyclic peptides are preferred over linear peptides the reason for this is first one is inherent flexibility of linear peptide actually leads to different conformations so due to that it can bind to more than and one receptor molecules and which can lead to undesirable adverse effect and which is not in case of cyclic peptide secondly cyclization of peptide reduces degree of freedom of each constituent within the ring and which can lead to reduced flexibility increased potency and selectivity of cyclic peptide and which are the ultimate target while we are going to synthesize the new molecule here you can see you can compare it with the lock and key mechanism if you have one lock one key you can easily open the key easily open the lock and in the adverse case if you have multiple uh, number of keys or number of locks then you have to try that key with the different locks and it will consume time so that is same is feasible with the biological response if one proper ligand one proper receptor they are attaching a proper biological response will come a proper bio effect will be observed and if number of receptors are more number of functional group those are not properly oriented or not going to properly attach where their location is then the problem will arise but here competitive inhibitors are showing in this diagram so actually this ligand is used to bind with that site but that site is occupied by some other so it is say hey that is my enzyme but he, it is saying whatever do not see your name it i i the green one is saying i don't see your name here so it was empty i occupied so response will not come so you can relate with these regarding the sources marine sponges as shown in the diagram jasper species hymenia acidocin uh, hymenia acidon species microscrotoma species these are some few key species where cyclopeptides are isolated marine mollusk like elysia species are there cyanobacteria like tolip pothrix hypomycetes are there then fungi bacteria plants like cedosteralia all are the potent resources for the cyclic peptide regarding to pharmacological activities these peptides are uh, associated with several activities but cytotoxic activity is the dominant one and uh, an example of cyclic peptides associated with the cytotoxic potential are cyxoxoxazolin stylostatin discocalides discodermins facilitatins and i have cited uh, stated different examples under different activity although those are not very abundant So main we are concentrating our around the cytotoxic and the antimicrobial. These are some of the peptides with the antifungal activity like just plaquenolide, rhodopeptins, halolitoralin, and escuclitin. Among these hymenamides and halolitoralins, we have synthesized in our laboratory. In fact, that was part of my PhD project in India. So anti-malarial activity. There are linear. there are certain linear peptides which are carbamabin a dragomabin all are associated with that and these are some of the other activities where these cyclopeptides are associated cyclo oxygenase inhibitory activity tyrosinase inhibitory antibacterial antimicrobial etc mechanism of action so i found from the literature how that cytotoxic uh, how 
cyclopeptide behave as cytotoxic they work by inducing apoptosis apoptosis is nothing but the programmed cell death and they are binding with the highly tyrosine phosphorylated ifg1 receptor one scene as well as antagonism of the proteins like p glycoprotein pgp and mrp1 was observed as a vital mechanism action as antifungal they act by inhibition of cell wall synthesis and here inhibition of enzyme beta 1 3 d glucan synthase which is helping in formation or in stabilizing the glucan polymers in fungal cell wall uh, is involved as antibacterials they act by interfering with the cytoplasmic membrane barrier so cyclo due to the these wide profile biological profile they are several are in clinical trial about 140 and more more peptide therapeutics are currently evaluated in clinical trial some of the peptides i have mentioned as anti tumor immunosuppression and anti fungal which which passed through the clinical trials and kahalalide f which is a anti cancer cyclic tridecapeptide from a mollusk is under clinical trials as per the literature cyclopeptides in clinic so these are the already established molecules which are used in several doses formed by the doctors like bacitracin it is used topically at and it acts by interfering with the cell wall synthesis and similarly polymexin b topical gramicidin s topical vancomycin iv or oral intravenous daptomycin and immunosuppressant cyclosporine so these are the compounds which are already in our clinic peptide drug market why i am showing you the peptide drug market slide because as you are going to select this project for, for as your research project so you must know what will be market utility and otherwise it will become just a paper publication based project and it should it should not be it should move up to patent or those uh, further activities and so that public can utilize uh, and public can actually benefit from your project although i am not reaching up to that stage but it is advisable to do up to that stage not up to the pro research project level so currently there are more than 60 us fda approved peptide medicines in market 500 therapeutics are pre clinical development there is history of lupron from abbott laboratories for the treatment of prostate cancer which achieved global sales of more than us dollar 2.3 billion 2011 similarly lentus tm from sanofi which uh, whose sales reached up to us dollar 7.9 in 2013 these are peptide based product so if we are comparing the global peptide drug market so it was according to the literature in 11 it was us dollar 14.1 million and which was increased up to 25.4 billion in 2018 and if pure peptide increase in uh, novel innovative peptide drugs you want to see so us dollar 8.6 billion in 2018 which was 60% increased up to 66% in 2018 which is us dollar 17 billion so these data itself are indicating that we should take interest in peptide molecules okay now i'm sharing with you what we are doing in lab how we are synthesizing the product so before going through we must go through the swot analysis swot means as strength what are strength of your project weakness opportunities threats strengths for example good efficacy safety high selectivity short time to market weakness are chemically and physically instability tendency for aggregation short half life so opportunities discovery of new peptides formulation development alternative delivery threats are immunogenicity new advances in genomics price and reimbursement environment so as you are seeing all the four parameters so you need a team it is not a one man job you need a pharmacologist you need a pharmaceutical technologist you need a uh, medicinal chemist and and so on the a team is required with their specific expertise otherwise a project can't complete that means how how we are doing our m form or those projects with one supervisor and in one lab so there that uh, got a question that there is just a paper based project we can't move it further 
so a proper collaboration is required in india we faced a tendency that if we are publishing a paper with more authors then it dilutes no here in this part of the world it don't dilute if you are 25 50 how much it doesn't you must be able to specify or justify your role as co-author in that paper that's all it is your paper but if you are not able to defend your role and your name is in the paper then it is questionable so we must change that tendency i don't know it is not in your hand or my hand it is as a whole we have to understand that that it is collaborative things and education expense education and knowledge expense by teaching in actual sense in collaborating in case of research you can say okay so there are few basic reactions in these projects like if we are carrying out uh, selecting two amino acid then we and if we are carrying out a coupling reaction so we need to protect a because a amino acid has a two free group one amino one carboxyl so we need to protect one group and we need to remain unprotected second group because we need the coupling reaction so here is the same if if we require the coh group as free group and nh2 group as protected so we have to protect by means of bo it is tertiary butyl oxycarbonate so we have to block it we have to carry out the coupling reaction and then we have to deblock it so that free nh2 group again will uh, will be released so similarly if sorry if we require a free amino group we have to protect a carboxyl group and that is feasible by means of esterification here methyl ester we have made and uh, this is the just the salt formation and in the reaction it will uh, release the free nh2 group this is the mechanism how bok protection work so here free nh2 group is there and here the one h is replaced by the bok group so our carboxyl group will remain free in the reaction here you can see the mechanism of bok uh, protection of uh, bok d protection so here nh uh, nh2 group was protected by the bok segment and finally after deprotection which is the reaction with trifluoroacetic acid you will get a free molecule r nh2 here is the free molecule and trifluoroacetic acid will release uh it is not only that bok we can use there are certain other agents as per literature we but we can use fmoc is recently used fluorinyl methyl oxycarbonyl chloride but the most commonly used was which we used in our laboratory it was cheap tart butyl oxycarbonyl and this is variable it is with glycine it can be attached to any of the amino acid to protect the free nh2 group similarly cbz carboxyl benzyl and and this you can see fmoc it is the free compound and this we have attached with the glycine com so this type of structure you will get coupling agents this is c is the cheapest dicyclohexyl carbodimide but we can also utilize edc and dic diisopropyl carbodimide and the dimethyl aminopropyl carbodimide but cheapest one is gcc which is widely available here is the coupling mechanism so this is the dcc structure this is your free amino acid and when you uh, in the coupling reaction you use the dcc it activates the carboxyl group so it is getting attached here and carboxyl group uh, is activated towards the free nh2 group of another amino acid so a proper peptide bond will form and side product dcu will result dicyclohexyl urea there is problem of racemization during these peptide synthesis if the peptide synthesis is not carried out under uh, constant condition then racemization may occur and instead of forming a double bo uh, a peptide bond you may get a uh, heterocyclic compound oxazolone here is, we have shown in the structure so under controlled conditions we must carry out and if we are not able to maintain those condition then we can use the racemization suppressing agent in the reaction so some of the racemization suppressing agent are mentioned here 
HOBT, which normally we use, and others are DMAP, dimethyl aminopyridine, and N-hydroxysuccinamide. Here is the mechanism formation of activated ester. So how this, these things work? Uh, activation of the free carboxyl group by attachment and then one hydroxy uh, bench triazole is added. It is attached here and it will become activated ester and it will take easily the other amino acid free with free NS2 group and coupling will take place and no chance of iso oxazolone formation is here. That can be totally avoided. We have performed the reaction with by adding Racemization suppressing agent, and then in control condition, we found that without racemization suppressing agent, there are few chances that oxazolone formation may occur. Because you, you have to maintain the reaction at lower temperature or so on. Here I cited one of the our synthesized compound, gypsum D, how we carry out the synthesis. So it is a, as you are seeing by the units, tri and tetra. Tetra plus trice, it, so it is a heptapeptide. So we took a dipeptide here, a, a single amino acid, dipeptide amino acid, dipeptide was coupled with amino acid to get a tripeptide. Two dip, dipeptides were coupled together to form a tetrapeptide. And then similarly, a tri and tetrapeptide after proper protection and deprotection of the carboxyl and amino group was coupled together to form a linear heptapeptide chain, which was finally cyclized in four steps, which were deprotection of the linear peptide at carboxyl end, replacement of the methyl ester with paranitrophenyl or pentafluorophenyl ester, deprotection of linear peptide at amino terminal, and finally the cyclization of linear chain in presence of different bases. So that is the whole soul reaction, how it occurred. So if, to carry out the synthesis of one cyclic peptide, so at least you will go through that more than 25 intermediates to reach the final compound and there will, will be there are problem of yields. So here is another compound we synthesized in our laboratory that was N-methyl cyclotetrapeptide. So this is the cyclization reaction and N-methylation here we have done by treatment with methyl iodide and sodium hydride because we started the reaction with the known N-methylated simple L-amino acid. So first we have to N-methylate them by this reaction and then we have to carry out further coupling, protection or deprotection reaction. This is Feb mass spectrum, how we interpret a compound by the Feb mass spectroscopy. So generally we see the number of fragments in the mass spectrum so we hypothetically break the compound at different amino uh, different peptide bond terminals like C, A, cleavage at isolation threonine. So this is isolation part, this is three, threonine part. So here, in between this peptide bond, if it breaks from here, so in black, I have indicated which fragment will result. C, 284, 383, 530, 587, these four fragments will result if the this compound will break at this particular point, isolation three And same is indicated in this peculiar. So how this, uh, you can see 383, 530, 587, and 284 is coming. So this can be the better interpretation of the cyclic peptide molecules when we are interpreting in terms of the Hep mass. These are some of the uh, we started our research in 2006 while I was in India. So we carried out near about synthesis of the more than 50 cyclic peptides. I have more than 70 or 75 high quality papers published with their, uh, the research since that. So this I have mentioned some of the compounds which were with antimicrobial potential, hymenamide, and we have published in 20, uh, 2006, halolitorlin A, these all compounds, these are published paper. Then these are some of the compounds with enthalmintic activity and which are published, all are cyclopeptides. These are some of the compounds with cytotoxic activity. These compounds from 2015 to 2019 were under research in our laboratory and we were able to successfully synthesize those besides several difficulties. 
our ongoing or future projects are synthesis of cyclic, methylated cyclic peptides and effect of N-methylation on biological activity, then heterocyclic incorporated dipeptide and tripeptide derivatives, dihalogenated and ditro-oligopeptides, and products via synthesizing amino acid conjugate of lysate. In 2016, we were able to publish these papers in Chinese Journal of Chemistry, Marine Drugs. The reason is 2017. These are some of our latest publications in 2020 and 2019. We could able to pull. Nowadays, we are, able, uh, we are concentrating on uh, research-based review articles also. And we are collaborating with India with a lot of groups who are interested to publish and I'm giving them specific sections in the in the research based reviews. They are writing and we are then we are compiling together and able to publish an impact factor of about 2.5 to 4. These are our several collaborators. In China we are collaborated with Wuhan University of Technology. We have published few papers. Then in Australia, we are collaborated with University of Technology, Sydney, U University of Gondar, University of uh, Volega University, our AP state president is there. Then Mijan Tepe University in Indian, India, we I have some PhD scholars in Mewad University, Kurukshetra University, and we have collaboration with the Nest Jaipur National University. Recently, we collaborated in Malaysia with AIMST University with few of the scholars. So colleagues, collaborations are welcome from all over the world and where I'm discussing, it is no way, we have not limited our collaboration to Trinidad, Tobago or the colleagues we know. So those who are interested can join our group can, and those who want to make the scientific careers, the scientific writing, uh, and we, we may be able to assist. So. Uh, we can carry out. So before leaving, I want to just suggest few things I noted to be important to be shared with you. First one is when we are going through the research project, so give your heartly efforts to your research. Cri uh, critical thinking is required, innovative ideas should be there and which must be transformed into the productive research. Secondly, output of the research is research papers. Don't waste your research paper by publishing in the low quality predatory journal, which is generally happening in the India. And we are facing this issue outside India, that in India, a lot of predatory research is happening. It is diluting our country research. So don't do that. Do few, but, but uh, those few should be with quality so that those can be utilized by the other researchers for carry out further research. Don't do just the sake of publication. Okay, I published my for my degree. My degree is over. Let that's that that don't go for that intention. Yeah, that's why my collaboration is welcome, and you can even collaborate with other groups so that at least there. See now, minimum uh, requirement is PhD. We have given so many years to this profession. So when we will leave this profession after a age there must be an individual impact of an individual researcher. It, not, it should not be that, oh, okay, we just did a PhD. No, after that, what is what, your role is more significant than before PhD. So you, and it is a continuous job. As, as teaching is a continuous learning, so it is, research is also a continuous job. We, I'm also learning here. Even, even though after 75 publications, I'm getting the new ideas and I'm trying to implement those in my research. Okay, uh, if I know there are issues with the uh, financial issues mainly because uh, research requires a lot of money, but you can go for review articles. Contribute your reviews so that th uh, those can be, if uh, those can be helpful for those who are carrying out the research. So, uh, we, we are uh, currently now we are engaged in writing certain review articles in high impact journals. So I'm in process of making my research group, those who are really interested to devote time in such activities. So, and, and really have the ability to write, 
they can join us and we can carry out further so they will get the ideas in one or two years they may be maybe they they may be able to write their own projects or research individually so i can assist in that writing so i will stop with the, those that you try to join our association also because we are doing lot of activities i'm uh, after my job time i'm trying to give maximum time to the association even though i am in the west indies so like i i got the offer from your principal and so i said yes so i i want to be involved in profit otherwise we will become dumb and just we are serving we are getting money so that that thing feeling should not be there you must be creative so so join app strengthen app so that we can conduct more and more events your your nips is well involved in conduction of activities and i request conduction of more activities involve more in awards those who are uh, you can identify your teachers who are more capable in certain awards they can move outside the state we can motivate them by conferring with them with awards so that they can further motivate their students to do the same it is the overall intention so with these words i thank you all for listening so if any question is there it can be carried out thank you very much thank you very much sir for your valuable informations uh, for today's session and really we are appreciating you uh, for uh, brief about the today's uh, topics now it's a time for question and answer session by dr surya vamsi so surya please continue yes sir thank you sir for enlightening and entertaining presentation on the right way i would like to start the question and answer session so this uh, so, um, here is a participant who raised his hand for asking the question directly to you sir Dr. Nipendra Nath Bala, let me unmute your mic. Please ask your question directly for sir. Please sir. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Wait. Dr. Nipendra Nath Bala. So please unmute yourself and ask me. Hello. am i audible yes sir yes uh, sir uh, many many thanks uh, professor dahia chat for his uh, informative session and uh, very important discussion sir i have one question to uh, you know uh, whether there is any possibility of psychology uh, uh, for uh, managing the covid cyclopeptides could, could be used for managing the covid in the coming days is there any possibility see uh, i not seen the any research on uh, covid specific cyclic peptide but i have seen cyclic peptides with antiviral activity which can be carry forward for that particular thing but now scientists are busy with other anti i i seen anti malarial or those type of drugs so i don't want to disturb them in that mode because that uh, uh, it requires lot of time to we we'll select a new compound and then carry out further i think they should develop that chloroquine or those type of compounds which have shown efficacy first but it is those uh, i in the literature several cyclic peptides are there which are particularly effective as antivirals those can be suspected thank you sir thank you thank you sir and here one more the participant who is here Dr. Nagin Abu Sirin Sangeetala Guru, please unmute your mic and ask the question. Hello. Yeah. Sir, good morning, sir. Yes. Sir, myself, uh, Dr. Nagin Abu Sirin, faculty of NIPS, sir. So you have correctly said that there should be collaborative research. There should be collaboration between two institutes and even two universities, having uh, profound knowledge in different areas. so unfortunately this thing is not happening in our country hope that it will happen in future sir sir my question is that uh, 
is there any chance of enzyme based cyclization of oligopeptides because any peptide will contain n number of uh, peptide bonds sir if we perform a reaction to cyclase in a laboratory there is every chance that uh, the unwanted groups will be affected that is the reason why we have selected bock and fmoc Mm. selectively so the, we need to yes sir mm -hmm. so select uh, selectively uh, uh, okay sir actually there are several techniques uh, what i am using is solution phase peptide synthesis in solid phase peptides there are linkers and other thing there may be the enzyme uh, what you are asking that type of thing see the area of research is very vast people are understanding that okay i will do 1 2 3 4 5 4 5 things are not possible you have to stick on only one i stick on peptide and solution phase technique i give my 16 years that's why i have the output so we, and uh, secondly we have the disadvantage that uh, the research facility where we will go you have to develop that much grant is not feasible nowadays there is uh, lack of grants so you can apply you will not select uh, these are certain issues so uh, basically what Uh, my thing is what you are being taught during your mcom and phd level that you have to carry forward i carried forward that what i got from my mcom and phd it is not my new field it is basically came from my mcom and phd project at that i elaborated so same thing i expect from you at that time if you are just following your guide okay do that and you are doing that much only and then you Uh, completed the project. Okay, now my M form is over. I do. I will not think further. So that thing is not going to work. The basic you have to gain from there how that reaction happened and how can I imply those conditions to the new products when I will become the independent researcher. So that uh, so uh, that is the main question to answer uh, in today. you can't pick up at once so that's why uh, i uh, i'm i'm not saying you collaborate in research you can collaborate in review at least some skills you can get that how to write and how to publish in these high and at least be away for those predatory type of thing which are uh, just uh, destroying our cvs and careers oh, okay sir sir what are the potential challenges uh... in developing a cyclo oligopeptide as a drug molecule sir see the, uh, lot of uh, you, you can't say i i not deal with the clinical trial type of, i i'm i'm dealing with the synthesis and that's why i say my i have also limited circum i reached up to the stage of publishing first i published journal in lower impact then i improved that but i am a academic researcher i i have the uh, doubt that we could not develop up to that stage that it can be used for the clinical practice because in usual practice what is there if i am doing a chemistry project then nobody is carrying forward that project if a pharmacology person will there he will take some new project and innovation is not taking a new project from there you can select some of the compound which was left by some medicinal chemist and then carry forward whether he that compound can be because it is my limitation i am not a pharmacology expert now i am not a technologist this i learned from by coming here that we need a proper combination of scientists to carry out a complete project complete project means the selection of compound synthesizing of compound toxicity and pharmacological studies then development of doses form and then clinical trials and whether that compound can be effective in public this is complete project not our uh, it is just synthesize something paper published or you have degree awarded so we are sticking to that basic so, but we must uh, broaden our mind in thinking that how i can go the, for the project up to that level that is my basic thing so i i i i am not directly involved with clinical trials so i can't say they a person with that expertise can only tell i can say only by literature there are several compounds in clinical trials so and one major challenge what i noticed from literature is their oral bioavailability for the with the peptide drug but there are certain techniques by which we can resolve that 
thank you sir sure there is a question in the chat box you please see yes sir ंग्लेक्स मोलिक्यूल basic but basic component remains the same amino acid units okay and here are some questions from the youtube so you can so can antigen molecule fight against coronavirus which one the antigen molecule anti tens molecule antigens you call so that the they write that anti cell S-E-N-T. I can't comment on that. That is not peptide. Okay. So, sir, is there any uh, uh, immunostimulant peptide drug for molecules? Immunosuppressive. I given some examples, sir, in the slides. Yes, sir. And some of them are cyclosporin. Active. Cyclosporin A is the compound which has immunosuppressive activity. And they are also asking about anti-diabetic because you already said the plant has an insulin. And what are the other some anti-diabetic symptoms? Antibiotics. Anti-diabetic. Anti-diabetic peptide molecules. Yes, sir. I don't yes, see any. I don't see any official compound. But some some GLP-1 and agonist compounds are under research for clinical trials. Uh, i have mentioned in one slide also which are peptide in nature not true cyclic peptide but they have the peptide bonds in the structure the synthesis of peptides are rich in serine is it true synthesis of peptides are rich in serine is it true your voice is breaking Sir, are you audible? Yes. Yeah. Tell me. Synthesis of peptides are rich in serine. Is that true? Are rich in serine. S e r i n e. Serine. Serine. Okay. Rich in serine. No, it is not like that. Uh, we have proline-rich compounds. We have phenylalanine-rich compounds. Serine, but serine, uh, I have seen in many of the compounds as component. Okay. It may, but uh, they may differ in the stereochemistry. L or D uh, compounds can be there of the same compound. Can cyclic peptide act as an inhibitor? Which can inhibitor? Cyclic peptide. Just they ask about inhibitor. Can cyclic peptide act as an inhibitor? Inhibitor of what? They didn't complete that question, sir. They just said. Ask like that one. Can they act as an inducer, or I think they are asking about whether they act as inducer or whether they act as inhibitor. I have sir certain enzymes I show you like tyrosinase, protease inhibitor. They are. We have some cyclic peptides in literature. Okay. And the last question, sir. And I think there is no any questions from uh, YouTube. And Can I please explain the applications of cyclo uh, cyclo oligopeptides as pharmaceutical aids in formulation of drugs. Cyclo oligopeptides as pharmaceutical aids in formulation of drugs. So those compounds which which are in clinical trials, those are already answers your question. That is. if they are going up to clinical development stage so they are uh, they can be formulated well so, so uh, the, the slide what i shown the cyclic peptides used in clinics that indicates those are already available as iv infusion or topical creams these uh, gramicidin s bacitracin polymyxin b these are available in the market and doctors are prescribing them for certain conditions 
thank you so thank you for your valuable information and uh, thanks for uh, being here sir that we are very proud to say that we learn a new topic uh, which was completely unaware about this so thank you once again sir let i hand over the session to dr sir <laughs> I request our principal sir, please a uh, uh, few words, sir. Yeah, nothing. Uh, it's uh, uh, the entire session was uh, self-explanatory. Dr. Rajiv, uh, uh, very good and excellently, uh, you know, uh, explained the uh, session on uh, oligopeptides. Um, very nice and the uh, encouraging statement. What you have given is uh, uh, one can do collaboration. Uh, with you uh, as of it may be research or publication or whatever it is i think it will be an inspiring statement to many of the participants and many of the participants are asking the details contact details of uh, dr rajiv the here uh, with your permission so, if you permit us uh, you, you can you, you can give me that gmail my gmail address to them yes. so they, they can send their queries dr somnath please uh, share the gmail id of uh, dr rajiv the here in the yes, sir. it is dr rajiv the year the red gmail dot com yeah exactly and uh, thank you sir i understand that we are at the rising end of our day and you are almost at the midnight uh, of uh, your uh, <laughs> so thanks for sparing uh, a lot of time to us uh, and uh, it, it is uh, it is quarter to 1 here yes quarter till 12 45 oh. 12 to 12 45 in night yeah. my god so we should be very thankful and sorry for the, you know not letting you sleep no no that, that 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 is the only possibility we can interact otherwise in day time i will be busy in my office work so it is the only time i can give <laughs> anyway thanks for sparing your time and i request you are during your next visit to india maybe this time you last your vacation and whenever you come to india please make a visit pay a visit to our institution yeah yeah so so the only thing that i explore that Uh, if you want to develop a lab it is not costly and then we can uh, share some of the facilities and if we aware you are we you online you can be in touch or you, who is uh, who want to develop such type of compound and yeah. then we can carry out for i can help somewhere in publishing i can help uh, i will not uh, uh, i will involve much in publication part i and i will try to complete the project in that way in uh, time on timely basis if any problem is coming the thing is not that you have correctly synthesized or not the thing is you, whether you learned the technique because when second time you will encounter the same or similar type of project you will improve a lot the pro- because now we realize what we did in our mpom what we did in our phd and what we are doing now i have the three stages in hand and i have improved a lot but it is not like that ideally we are the true scientist it is not like that we are learning learning at each stage so the same thing is with other person they will learn by steps so sure. i suggest my so definitely all department of chemistry will come forward sir to be in touch with you yes. and uh, yes. over to yes. dr somnath yes. Dr. Somnath. Yes, sir. Uh, please, uh, concluding remarks, please. Great. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you being here, and thank you again for joining us today. And we will see you tomorrow. And uh, uh, reminding to all, tomorrow session will be start on Saturday, eleven a.m. by dr t vijay vaskar reddy sir hope everyone follows the same and do the needful thank you so much sir and uh, dr somnath uh, yeah. don't forget forget to send the news of this event to me in uh, word yes sir so 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 that it uh, uh, we will publish in our news magazine and wherever it will be required i will send okay sir okay okay sir okay thank you so much sir Okay thank you. Okay thank you colleagues thanks for the op- thanks for the opportunity given to me. Okay bye. Thank you sir. Thank you sir. Thank you thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Bye bye. Bye sir. Have a nice sleep sir. Mm-hmm. Thank you bye bye. Mm-hmm. The IT department please may end the session. Yes sir.